Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this tutorial, we're going to check out how to retopologize something in Maya. This is not going to be in terms of the deep principles of topology. It's purely going to be what tools do you use, how do you get started with retopology, and just some general good practices when doing it. So we use using Maya 2018 for this. This is going to work for pretty much all older versions as well for it. So the first thing we got to do is we're going to have a model in here. This comes straight from ZBrush. This has just been decimated from ZBrush so that we, we retain all the details, but the pull count is low. Very first thing we got to do is we're going to make this live. This means that geometry will snap to this surface. So first we just select it. Then we go all the way up here. And you see to the right here, we have a button and a little magnet here. And this will make it live. It's no longer selectable. And you got a little message here saying this object is now live. This means all, all geometry will now snap to this. You can no longer select it. There's nothing you can do to it anymore, yeah. except when you make new geometry, or like new planes or something, it'll stick to this mesh. Yeah, so if you do want to select it for, for whatever reason, you can do this through the outliner only. So the tool we're gonna be using now is the quad draw tool. You can find this up here. So this is where we have the general modeling toolkit here. So now you can see that something has been constrained to it here. We have a live surface. So the quadro tool is all the way on the bottom right here. It's a pretty handy tool. And it's been in Maya for a few versions. When they when they acquired the modeling toolkit here, modeling in Maya sped up like 10 times. I it's, think it was, uh, it was Nex before. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And it just got so much better. Yeah. Like Quadro is, is easily one of the best additions to the modeling toolkit um, in Maya for like for a long time, I think. It's, it's a very, very powerful tool. Yeah. Uh, a little pro tip with this general toolkit here. On the bottom here, you can find all the hotkeys for, for all the various tools here. So if you're in doubt about the hotkeys we will cover in this tutorial, you can always just go to the bottom here and you can see them. If you go to connect, it, this is gonna change. Or if you go to, to multi-cut, you're gonna see that you get different hotkeys here. So let's talk about quad draw. Let's just hide this one. So the moment you activate this and you just start clicking on a model, you're gonna see that you get points here. These points are now snapped to the model, and this is the, essentially the base for your retopology. If you hit the Shift key now, you can now make polygons between these. You can also just undo this, and you can just drag this in one go. And this is essentially how we get started with all forms of retopology here. If you use just a left mouse button on the geometry creator now, you can just move it around. You can move it around on, if you hit the face, it's gonna move the face, edge, the edge, and you guessed it, the vert, it's gonna <laughs> move the vert. I guess, I mean, one of the nice things about this versus sort of, let's say, old school retopology tools, sometimes they wouldn't be live on the surface and you would have to sort of adjust it to it. This just, no matter what you do, if you drag along, you drag the face along the, the mesh, it'll just snap to it perfectly. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very useful tool here. So if you want to, if you want to keep working on this now, if you want to add more topology, you can always just add more points and then you can hold on the shift key and you can just click here. But this gets a bit cumbersome sometimes and uh, it, it's not the ideal process. It just takes a bit of time to do this. Though this is, this, I, I often start with this. If you want to add new geometry now, you can hold on the, sh the tab key and you can just drag on an edge here just to extend the edge out. This is a very useful tool. And you can see it, it automatically, like here, it automatically snaps to this point here. If you want to drag out a whole loop of this, you can hold on the tab key and middle mouse button and now it's going to drag out the entire loop. Yeah, this is super useful if you're doing an arm. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have to draw around the entire arm all the time. So no. if you just do one loop around the entire arm, then you can just drag out and insert some some more loops. Yeah. So let's say you want to do, to do this entire pack here. You can just hold on the tab key and you can just drag it in and you can just move it. And you can just keep extending this out. So pretty nice stuff. If you want to delete something, if you hold on the control and shift key, you can now see you get a little X here and whatever is marked now, if you just uh, just mark with your regular cursor or tablet, it's gonna delete all of that. If you do the same thing, control shift and you hold and you hover over an edge here, it's gonna delete the entire edge loop. Super useful stuff. If you hold on the control key and you just hover over um, some polys here, some edges, 
you're going to see that you can insert a loop. And this snaps automatically to it. So you can see that it, it conforms perfectly to this. So the way I'm retopologizing normally is I just keep it very low res. And then I, um, like if your topology is like this, I just make sure that it's superly even spaced like this. And then we can add more loops. Because then the next loop is going to be super clean. This is going to be super clean and all that. If your loop is, if this is your geometry, super nice, and you add a loop, you're going to see that everything becomes messy. So the cleaner your base is, the cleaner everything will be down the line. That's very nice. Uh, Thank uh, you. Big fan. Yeah. One thing that can help you sort this out, like I say, you've been retopologizing just all over the places. You can just smooth out your mesh at yeah. the same time, just you know, to get a little bit of a to help you, so you don't have to manually move each vert. Yeah. So let's say this was a lot heavier than this. Like you're obviously not going to be able to just do this. <laughs> like that is just not helpful. So what you can do, if you hold on a shift key, you can see now it's 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 just relax here. So by default, you're just going to paint across this, and it's pretty handy, but it's a bit annoying that you have to move across all points here. But if you hit the B key, you get a soft selection. If you hold on a B and just drag left to right, up or down, um, it's going to just give you a radius for this. So now you can hold down the shift key and you can, it's just going to smooth out whatever you have here. That's so nice. It is really a nice tool. It's really handy. <laughs> if, you, if you just hover on... Um, the, uh, on the regular polys here, it's going to smooth the internals. You can see here that it, the border edges are locked. But if you, if you hold on a shift key and you smooth on, on the borders, it's going to smooth the border edges here. This is due to uh, the setting here called auto lock. You can also change this to all verts. That means that everything is going to be smooth when you do this. But then everything shrinks a little. So sometimes you, you don't want this because everything just goes a bit crazy here. <laughs> so if you set this to... Uh, Auto lock, you might have more control because now you can smooth the internals and then you can smooth um, the external border edges like this. It's pretty handy stuff. You can see now that um, soft select is also currently on. This is not just a smoothing. If you want to move stuff around, this totally works with soft selection like this. So this is an incredibly handy way of doing it. I didn't know about the soft select thing for a long time, so I just moved vert by vert. It was really annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's going to take some time. <laughs> So you can also use the quarter tool. Let's say you're doing some kind of digital double, or if you have a mesh which you need to conform to something else, you can totally do this, and you can just use you can just use uh, the move tool here, or you can just move the points around and just shift, uh, shift paint or shift drag, just to uh, to conform the points to the model below it. So this is incredibly handy, but it can also be really annoying if you do. Let's say you're moving this, and it, you can see it snaps automatically like this. Super handy that it snaps automatically, but let's say you want to preserve the vert order of this. Like you don't, you don't want the actual model to change. You can go here and you can just hit auto weld. So if you disable this, you can see that it's not going to, it's not going to snap together. But for most of the time, if you're starting out with a retopology and you don't have a have an already completed mesh, you probably want to keep auto weld yes, on. Yes, yes, most of the time. Like it, it's a really cool tool, Quadro, not just for retopology, but like Kenning says, if you're doing uh, a digi double or you need a mesh that you need to conform to another mesh, yeah. you could do this as well. Yeah. So we won't get too much into detail here in terms of like actual like good edge flow and all that, but we'll just generally just show you how we would approach a general retopology here. Like we already covered the entire tool here now, like there are very few additional options here. Like it's, it can do, it can't do a whole lot. It can do, it can, you can add topology to it, um, but it's not a very advanced tool in that regard. It's, I guess that's not, you don't really want an advanced retopology tool. You want it to be kind of simple. Yeah. Because it just needs to do one thing really well. It takes you a few minutes to learn this and then then that's it. But the way I'm, I'm starting to, to actually retopo this kind of stuff would be big, surfaces don't start small i've seen people start doing this kind of stuff <laughs> oh you also uh pro tip speaking of doing a small if you hold on just a tab key you can down lay, lay down strips like this it's pretty handy stuff i never do this <laughs> yeah never <laughs> i've never done this this is like the second time in my life i've actually done that because I, w I want to start off broad because if you start off broad it's, it's, like, it's like we're talking about in our sculpting videos as well you want to start from general to specific 
it's a lot easier to change the edge flow if you're starting off with big strokes. Yeah, what's important in the beginning is just your loops. Yeah. It's not necessarily details. It's not, you know, you get the nipple in there. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, I've it's seen people in, even in production just starting, they're going super granular and you're starting actually working on this. You really want to just work on the big shapes. The here. problem with that is that in one part, it's going to take you way longer to retopologize yeah. and it's going to be much harder to change yeah. further down the line. If you have any changes you want to do, let's say you mess up how you did the shoulder, th that's you have to rework that entire area. Yeah. So the way you want to do this, you want to just start off broad and then you want to test your topology. Let's say you're doing a character like this. You want to just make sure that this topology works. You want to do a quick rigging test on it. So you just do that. You don't finish it and then you test it. So super broad here now, and now we're just adding another loop here. And now you can see this is super clean now because the foundation was clean. You can add more loops to it and the foundation is still clean. And if for some reason no, stuff gets a bit messy, you can also smooth it out. Just smooth it out a little like this using the shift shift paint. I honestly think that's my favorite feature of this tool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really good. Yeah. So now you can see here you get a bit some unexpected results because of the curve here. We can, um, so we're just adding this and now we can just go in here and just massage all this into place. <laughs> very, very handy stuff. What you can also do is uh, you can just start off super low like this. Maybe you need you need more loops because maybe you need one additional subdivision level on this. Instead of going in and just adding loops like this uh, and just smoothing it out, you can just use, um, just select the model here, shift right mouse button, and you can just smooth. That's just gonna smooth everything, everything once. So I don't think when you do this, I don't think it conforms immediately. No. Then you have to go in and conform it exactly. afterwards. Exactly. So so what you can do now, now you can just hold on the shift key and it and just smooth it. And I was gonna snap to this. So now you get you have the advantage of uh, super clean topology, mm. but it looks it looks way cooler. And this is something we've talked about before, but the advantage of having a retopology tool within a modeling software yeah. or within a 3D software. Because doing this kind of stuff, if you wanted to add extra detail, as you wanted to add a spike or something, like you wanted to extrude a face, that's most of the time you can't do that in, in bespoke retopology softwares. Yeah. But if you have it in an actual 3D software, you have the freedom to, like, let's say, subdivide it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what more to start with here, let's say you actually want to do an extrusion here or you want to subdivide it here. Let's say you want to extrude this. You can um, disable make life and we can go in here and we can actually extrude something out here. This is something you can't really do in something like 3D code or various softwares because you don't actually have poly tools. If you're doing something like, if you're using something like Topogun, you can't really do, use this. For this example here, obviously you wouldn't want to extrude <laughs> here because that's, that's a bit silly. <laughs> yeah. But let's say you're doing something like the interior of the eyes here. You don't just want to you don't just want to leave it like here. You actually want to have like a like an eye bag on the inside. Same with the mouth as well. You want to actually have a proper mouth which goes from here and goes all the way in. Yeah. It's incredibly annoying having to having to use a tool like uh, like I have to go between something like um, uh, Topogun and Maya when you can just do this in Maya. Mm -hmm. Those tools might be marginally faster at certain things. Maybe the performance is a bit better, but the fact that you do have a full suite of modeling tools here is incredibly useful. So that's pretty much what we how we, we retopologize. Regardless of what it is you are retopologizing, this is going to most likely be sufficient here. Again, remember that you have um, Plot keys on the bottom here. Oh, so useful. Super useful. We <laughs> yeah. just learned some some of these just before the video here, actually, because <laughs> there were just so many, and they're they're just super handy. So I hope this has been useful for you. And in the next video, we or next retopology video, we'll cover some more theory behind uh, topology. We'll go through a face and how to actually do this nicely, not just this random shoulder piece for an ogre. So thanks for watching. Uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future.